OK, delighted to say we have Guillaume Balaguer, Spanish football journalist, live on the line now from Qatar. Guillaume, how are things? Yeah, things are all right. Things are all right. It's been, I think, 12 days since I arrived and uh, I haven't stopped. <laughs> so I haven't seen, I don't even know how to get to the beach. But uh, <laughs> there will be time for everything, I'm sure. I'm sure you've seen a lot of the a lot of the metro, a lot of the press rooms. It's all been kind of uh, it's all been go. I, I'd imagine there's no there's no let up. Bad start. Bad start. I haven't seen the metro yet. It's all oh, really because yeah, I'm staying in a house with uh, Rafael Honigstein and Grand Wall and James Horncastle, who I'm sure you've spoken to all of them. And uh, we, it's a great place. Three floors and there's a terrace at the top, and it's got a swimming pool and all that. But uh, it's not near metro. So where we want to go somewhere, and generally it's a training ground or a stadium or or the or the or the media center, just get a, just get the Uber. So no, I don't. I heard it's great, but I don't know. <laughs> I haven't seen it yet. How how do you feel about the whole thing at the moment? I mean, I, I know there's a lot of uh, takes time to get used to the whole uh, situation in Qatar and 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 how the the World Cup is is proceeding and and even the stadiums and we're seeing some empty seats at some matches, but then other games are, are quite full. So how are you finding the whole thing so far? A hundred feelings and um, about it all, uh, and and to start with, I'm glad I'm here. I'm glad of 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 not analyzing or judging through filters through somebody that's telling me this is good or this is bad. I'm seeing it myself, and and what I'm seeing is a lot of servicial people that uh, want to help you, a lot of volunteers. I, I'm seeing amazing stadiums. I'm very aware that uh, today the uh, death figure of uh, migrant workers has come from from three to four hundred, um, and it's probably more. It's it certainly uh, it seems to me the case that uh, football has got the power to actually change things. I do believe in that very much so, and and things are changing things. Starting with the fact that that Qatar had lied to us about about those figures, and all of a sudden they accept that uh, that they done things wrong. Um, I'm sure more things have to change, uh, and I'm sure that uh, you know the treatment uh, to the LGBT community and 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 migrant workers have to improve. But I'm also sure that if we hadn't been here, things wouldn't have changed. It's just simply like changing, and the experience itself uh, for me is all work uh, basically. And sharing time with my colleagues is a is a, a lot of fun. Uh, being with them in this house, it's a lot of fun. Uh, and I don't want I, I, I don't want that to to disappear. It's a it's a it's a time to actually grow mentally and many senses. I'm learning a lot from James, from Barker, from Grant, a lot. But I'm also learning from being here, uh, and it's not just about the fact that it's very hot, about the place. And so that, there are some stadiums that are amazing. I mean, the nine seven four one that will be dismantled after the World Cup is just it's just a, what humans can do when we get together to do stuff. Uh, it's just unbelievable. We saw the uh, the protest from a from a fan at the during the Portugal Uruguay game last night, and surprisingly, it was the first on pitch protest by a fan. I'm sure the security is is obviously tight as well at these stadiums, uh, and we had the whole armband discussion at the start of the tournament. Were captains like Harry Kane going to going to wear the armband or not? Um, are are you surprised at the, I guess, lack of I guess on pitch protest or 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 actions by by captains and teams at the World Cup or? No, I'm not surprised because I mean, if you were a shirt that says Iran woman, <laughs> uh, you get stopped and you have to argue with police. Now, this is obviously a police state. Uh, we we go in, into a place that uh, have got very strict rules, and not just that, there is fear because the ones who implement those rules, the the police on the ground, they're not even from Qatar. Uh, but I think. But uh, they are in fear of uh, repercussions if they don't implement what they think are the rules. But the rules have been, uh, the goalpost has been moved a little bit. Um, but now it's becoming clear that Qatar is in charge, not FIFA. So the police have responded to that as well. Um, they, whatever gets discussed in the British media or in the Western media or in the Spanish media, don't get to the police down on the ground. The, the idea that they were told that there is a bunch of things that cannot be done, they will insist with that until the end of the tournament. They won't get, it won't get filtered to them that things have changed or anything. But I insist, I think, uh, with the whole circus coming down here and we'll all go after a while and there is a lot of buildings that are not done and will not, will not be done. And I don't know who's going to be living in those that have been done. There's all that to question yourself. The um, 
the 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 the, the, the cost of it, you know, no, the World Cup has cost as much as this one, etc. That that's debatable, but uh, but I do think that the, 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 there's been a stamp on football and things. It's just that people want everything to change now and uh, and to have more protests on the pitch, hundreds of them if possible. It's not possible because we are in police state. It's not possible because not everybody I can see a country with that intention of protesting. Um, but the fact that there are protests are making this Qatari society think, all right, maybe we're not getting everything right. Still, uh, I understand they want their, their way of living to be respected. My respect finishes where, where human rights are not respected either. So that's the, that's the conflict that's happening daily here. Yeah, I can imagine. Uh, it's a tough one. The the uh, the on pitch, I guess, affairs have been entertaining to say the least. Um, Spain have been have been very impressive, and I know that the Germany game, uh, Germany were they were good in the second half and came back to to get the the draw. But uh, I saw someone on Twitter pointing out that you know watching watching Pedri and Gavi at the moment is is like watching a respawn of of Xavi and Iniesta, and it, like they are just both a, a joy to watch at, on this uh, this world stage. Yeah, easy. Let me see who's your right. Oh, hello, Grant. Hey. <laughs> um, it's not Xavi and Iniesta, uh, but certainly have got some characteristics of them. I think Pedri will reach the same heights. Not sure about Gabi, that everybody's in love with, but he's he's a. Uh, I think uh, Morata was saying yesterday. Even in um, in training, he's a buffalo, <laughs> going for every every ball as if he's the last one. And uh, apparently he hit Morata once without the ball. And said, I haven't forgotten about that one. So he owes him that one. Um, Gabi does very well what he does, but uh, but he's a little bit chaotic. Pedri has got a whole pitch on his on his brain, and it's, it's yeah, it's wonderful to see with Busquets next to them. You take Busquets away, and it's a it's a different Spain. It was enjoyable to watch them, as I said from the beginning, uh, and and I think that was the message of Luis Enrique. Enjoy while it lasts. If it gets to a point, we get to quarters and Brazil beat us. Well done, Brazil. If they were better than us, or we'll just be upset if they weren't better than us and we get knocked out, because football does that sometimes. But meanwhile, uh, there is no expectations. Uh, we're just uh, enjoying ourselves. Germany, careful with Germany. Mm -hmm. uh, there were a couple of players that told Spanish players, two German players that told Spanish players, beat Japan. Of course we'll beat Japan, because we won... You to go as far as you can, and on the way, just kill big teams. So you know, we 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 get maybe to the final against Germany, which we think we can uh, as are, are equal to. But they grew into the game, and uh, and we we lost control. It was interesting that the players came out quite and and Luis Enrique quite upset with having been not not having won that game. But they watched the game again, and I thought, you know what, we we dealt well with what was thrown to us and we could have lost it with that Sunday chance at the end. So, yeah, it's 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 a team that uh, will make you all enjoy a fit Spain. I guess there's something to be said that when you met when you mentioned Sergio Busquets having that experience alongside the two the two young players uh, and you need a kind of a bit of a blend of youth and experience because you look at the likes of well Suarez for example or or the Belgian defense and and you're seeing aging uh, teams and players and and clearly for the likes of Belgium and Uruguay, it's just not working. They don't have that blend, I guess. Yeah, it's it's not like... It's a blend that has to do with the position on the pitch. You don't want an older player in the Gavi and uh, Pedri position. Pedri was the player that won the most uh, in against Germany. Uh, you, you need those legs to keep... And, and, and a fresh mind to, to see the gaps, to see where you have to run, to, to, to be relevant. But then in Busquets' role, yeah, you have to have that kind of maturity to understand when to pass the ball, when to go on pressure high and all that. Uh, and Busquets has got it in his head. He's the most undervalued player of the last decade, without any doubt. But the rest of the team, is age is not a, hasn't been an issue. Uh, Alba, Jordi Alba, it's interesting, Luis Enrique saying that um, uh, he's, he's the best fullback in the last third because he doesn't cross, he passes the ball. Whatever he does is with a meaning. Uh, again, if you have that, you have to use it. But at the same time, you need uh, the likes of Nico Williams or, or Ferran Torres, young players, to actually be brave enough to go out, to go one v one. You're absolutely right. In in some cases, the the blend doesn't work. Uh, Belgium reminds me of Spain 2014. We went one World Cup too many or one summer tournament too many for that group. But Vicente del Bosque was never gonna do any different. 
you know, they won everything. Let them enjoy. In Brazil as well, let them enjoy. I think Belgium is the same. Um, quite clear, Roberto Martina didn't feel that it was the time for recycling, but they had picked. They picked already. And now you start seeing the uh, the division within the side. And uh, with Spain, it was exactly the same. Everybody was blaming everybody else. And what it was, it's just the end of a cycle. And, then, and that when that happens, you just put too many old legs and people that care not enough, basically. Um, I, I had seen your, your interview with Robert Lewandowski from um, from just prior to the tournament. And um, I guess he's a, he's a TikTok star now as well as a, as, as well as a footballer, <laughs> Robert Lewandowski. But uh, really nice of, to see that moment where he, he finally... Uh, and I'm sure it was it was heavy on his shoulders, this weight of expectation at scoring a goal at the World Cup Finals, but he's finally done it. Yes, yes. I, I'm so glad uh, I, I caught up with him eventually because we live in the same city, Barcelona, but uh, we had to actually uh, do the interview in Warsaw because <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have time for it. Imagine. Um, but eventually we, we, we met and it was just a week before the start of the tournament. He was so um, open about everything, about the relationship with his dad who passed away and how rejection as a young man marked his life and how he was going to enjoy himself in the World Cup. No matter what, he was just going to go out there with a smile and see what he could do. Uh, but of course, it's probably his last World Cup. That's what he's saying. Uh, and he wanted to finish on a high, meaning scoring. He needs to, the greatest, one of the greatest goal scorers of, our, of that generation needed to have a goal, a World Cup goal. And when he did, it was just the... I bet, I bet everything went through his head, from his dad to uh, to the times that uh, he's had to overcome difficulties to uh, to having to represent his country. All things. I hope to talk to him about that game and about that goal. And I'm sure we can come out with a nice 45-minute podcast just on that. Yeah, what a moment for him, for sure, and for Poland. Um, Kylian Mbappe is a man who's who's lit up the tournament so far as he did uh, four years ago. Um, and he looks like a, a more mature player. You know, even the start of the tournament, I guess he was, uh, you know, taking all the set pieces on himself and, and and taking a lot of leadership positions. But then you're seeing the likes of you know Griezmann and and Dembele and and Rabio stepping up as well. So even though they had a lot of injuries, Benzema and Pogba and Kante included, France look like the real deal so far. Absolutely. He, the... I think people are getting a lot com- very confused when they start to compare national sides to Manchester City or to the Barcelona of 2010 or whatever, or Spain. Or um, That is the exception to the rule. The rule is uh, teams that if you are solid, if you don't concede and you can score and you can create enough to score, you're going to go very far. And uh, and France have got all of that. Griezmann is the oil for the machine. Is very clever what he's doing, especially now that they haven't got a... Uh, a powerful midfield, even though Rabiot is, as you say, is doing well. And Mbappé, it's not the, it's not as good as he can be, and it's not as good as he will be. Uh, I know that everybody's falling, you know, uh, over, how do you say, falling over backwards with uh, with uh, with his potential or w- w- what he with what he does and the fact that he could win a second World Cup and he'd be one from Pelé and he's got at his age many more goals than Messi and Ronaldo did at that age uh, there's all that but I still think he uses his power uh, far too often uh, and doesn't always use it cleverly he does a little bit too much doesn't always choose well so imagine imagine when he gets better uh, uh, there's is, there is still room for improvement but for this World Cup uh, France are creating very often the conditions for a 1v1 in which he can go and beat a defender and uh, and doing that and if he sees he raises his head a little bit doesn't try to finish everything off. Uh, he'll see that uh, Griezmann will be there or Giro will be there or, uh, and then, you know, or Rabiot or whoever. So there is room for improvement, not just uh, with uh, Mbappé, but with, with France as well. What What do you make of England so far? I mean, I know there's a potential clash with France in the quarterfinal if all things go well for, for the two of those sides. Um, really good against Iran in the first game. Uh, really tough game to watch against the USA second time out. But uh, I guess... They're getting the job done and at the same time Southgate needs to, I guess, know his strongest team because Phil Foden is the the man that seems to be on everyone's lips at the press conferences. Phil Foden, two goals in 19 games, um, who hasn't impressed at all yet and he's the the big hope. uh, When actually you've got Champions League winners, World Cup winners uh, on on that team, 
uh, well, World we'll, Cup we'll at a different level. But um, uh, yes, they're doing the job. But at the same time, there was two things that were very clear against the United States, which I don't know how you improve on. Uh, one, the athleticism of the United States was superior to England, and that was surprising because you would expect in England to be, you know, strong, uh, to run faster, to, you know, beat in the 50-50s. That's what England's always been. But no, uh, actually, they were taken aback. And because they saw that and the players sensed that, they started dropping back. And it was about not to make mistakes, not to concede. Um, and that was the second thing, fear. So I think um, there's a lot of players that uh, the coaching staff feels that they haven't been strong mentally at a time when you have to be, you, you get challenged more than ever in these competitions. And that's when you discover what people are made of. You know, the joker is he also a strong man when things are not going your way. And there was a lot of answers on, on that uh, game against the United States. So they need to shake that pressure off. Uh, second game is always difficult, but let's see, uh, you know, Wales should be easy enough. Maybe that will um, unleash the... The, the 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 potential of England because if things go well if if they, they find the, they find uh, the fluidity uh, they find themselves in the flow they're candidates they're definitely candidates they got goals everywhere and they can defend well and they can score in set pieces and they can stop conceding Just plenty of reasons to, to see them far but it's the head that needs to be released now. Um, Argentina and Messi managed to, to recover from the, the Saudi shock and get over the line against Mexico. Uh, and then we're hearing the news as well that um, potentially Messi could be joining into Miami and, and heading off to the MLS. Are you hearing anything on the ground about that and, and, and whether or not it's it's actually close? Nobody has read the article. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody has read the article. Everybody went with the headline. <laughs> the headline said, Messi said to go to Inter Miami. The article in the first paragraph put Matt Lawton because I'm sure he didn't put that headline. The article says Inter Miami are optimistic that they can convince Messi to actually make it to Inter Miami. What does that tell you? There's nothing. There's been conversations. Of course there has. Um, but it's not said to join Inter Miami. Busquets, yes. I think Busquets will go to Inter Miami and it's interesting that he's Busquets because he's a close friend of Messi. I think Leo at some point, but would you go to Inter Miami? Is in is in at PSG uh, with candidates to win the Champions League, passing the ball to Neymar and Mbappe and Hart, Hart and so many others. Um, no, he's he's got a two year plus one with PSG. PSG are going to abandon the idea of renewing the plus one, but do another one, which is going to pay him another 30, 40 million net. Uh, as he used to earn at, at Barcelona, and um, and they want to offer one plus one, the favourites to keep him right now because Barcelona is just words. Not there's no strategy behind it. There's no commercial strategy, financial strategy. There's no conversations between the chairman Laporta and him. There's nothing. It's just words. So with that in mind, you have to say when he starts thinking about it, which will be after the World Cup, and that could be January or June. Then PSG have got the advantage. He won't go to the MLS next season. Uh, at some point he will that's the plan but no and you know I recommend everyone to just go back to the source and abandon the idea of just making your judgment just with a headline yeah maybe people's uh, attention spans need to need to go further than just the, the headline in the, this day and age that's certainly dangerous uh, one of the things um, game that, that really kind of I guess put rumours and football and results into perspective was has been Luis Enrique and his own personal story and, and uh, I mean He's, he's such a great manager and he seems to be a great guy as well. A lot of people seem to uh, get a lot get a lot out of him. Um, but he, he put a post up on on the day of the, the Germany game where he was reflecting on the fact that it was his, his late daughter's, uh, what would have been her 13th birthday. Um, and, and I guess that's something in Spain and, and across the world that, that caught a lot of people's imaginations because it really kind of put everything into perspective. He was uh, cycling in Doha in the morning. I mean, that is already crazy enough that should tell you what kind of person he is. Um, where he said, we're playing today against Germany. I don't remember uh, <laughs> a public message from my manager on the day of the game before in a World Cup mm. in Spain anyway. But then, yes, um, he 
is that and today, Shana, whatever you are, happy birthday. It would have been your 30th birthday. And uh, he's decided to leave uh, tragedy with, with normality. Uh, he th- he feels that, uh, and she he explained that in the press conference after the game, that she's gone, her body's gone, but uh, she's in their, in their thoughts, in their family thoughts every single day. And and don't don't in a way don't don't want them that to become the tragedy that determines the, the the rest of their lives. But just life is full of really good moments and in some cases really tragic moments, and you just have to leave that with total normality. For him to when he was asked in the press conference, I thought, oh God, I don't know if you should have asked that. But he answered again with a lot of normality as he's doing in his streaming. He talks about underwear. He talks about sex. Uh, for players, he talks about a lot of things. He talks about Ferran Torres, who is of course going out with his daughter. And by taking, it's it's how you kill, it's how you kill trolls, isn't it? You treat everything normal. Even there was some trolling, because there was some really awful song that they used to sing to him. And uh, he just picked the song and twisted it and threw it back with kindness. That's it. I mean, that that's that's how you should live life. And when he texts us, I, I I message sometimes with him, and there's always a message in his text or in his WhatsApps uh, on the line of, and don't forget to live your life well because we don't have a lot of time. And uh, and that tells you why he's chosen the way we're playing, because at the end, if you if you decide to pressure high, steal the ball, attack, attack, attack. It's not just a football style. It's a way of living. Do you want to be the conservative figure? Do you want to be the one that waits for things to happen, or do you want think you want to provoke things to happen? And we are the type. He is the type that provokes things to happen because life is to be lived, in his case, to the full with his marathons and his Ironman and, and the kind of things, crazy things that he does. So it's a lesson in life. Uh, and football, the best football, it normally is a lesson in life. Absolutely. Speaks volumes of the man and thoroughly impressive individual. Uh, Guillaume, you've been very good at your time. Just just finally, I guess, um, as we reach, I suppose, the halfway point in terms of to games played at the World Cup uh, and look ahead to the knockout stages, uh, who, who are you fancying at the moment? Like, Has, has your opinion changed in terms of favourites for the title from, from beforehand and from where you are now? No, I was quite impressed with Germany, so I'll put them in that list. Uh, England, I, I always thought they, they would have a chance, Brazil and France. I'm not that convinced about Argentina. Uh, they, they emotionally exhaust me. <laughs> and everybody else who watches them live, it's like life or death, every game. How can you think properly? Well, that's the case. So those are the ones. I don't see anybody else. I, I expected more from Senegal, um, even with Mane. I expected more from Cameroon. Um, but it's not happening in this in this tournament. Uh, you know, Serbia are doing well. They're solid, but not enough. Croatia a little bit too old. Belgium disappointing. I can I cannot see beyond those that I, that I mentioned first. I'm missing the last sixteen, by the way. I'm going back to England um, for six days because uh, because we're United, the club I'm chairman of, plays the third round of the FA Bas. Right. So if we win, we are four games from Wembley. Oh, so brilliant. I need to be there. I need to be there. So I'm, I'm ignoring the World Cup for for almost a week. Uh, going back home is the third of December. Wish us luck, and uh, and I hope that we can go to the next round. We play at home, by the way. If anybody's in Giggles, right? Three is the third at three p.m. Even though I hope that England are not second of the group because that's when England plays. It will <laughs> will play. I think they will be top of the group. But anyway, yeah. I'll see you at the uh, Kitch Hospice Stadium if anybody is near Beagles, right? Brilliant. Oh, 100%. You'll get out of the sun for a few, for six days as well and back <laughs> home to some proper football. <laughs> uh, listen, weather, I hear. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, listen, Guillaume, enjoy the rest of the tournament and best luck to your team in the, in the FA Vaz as well. That will be incredible, an incredible experience, no doubt. Uh, and here's hoping you get to Wembley. But uh, thanks, as, thanks as always for your time. Thank you very much.